Luvan. Speaker, uh, Madam Speaker, the uh, Honourable Member for uh, Regina Quapel and I both ran for the first time in the 2004 federal election. Uh, he was elected at that time. I took a somewhat more roundabout uh, route to this House. <laughs> Uh, now, the member for Regina Quapel uh, began his speech by talking about how some previous interventions in the Middle East had caused more problems. And I assume that the member for Regina Quapel is acknowledging that the Conservatives were wrong and mistaken to have called for Canada to participate in the 2003 invasion of Iraq. One of the problems with that intervention, Madam Speaker, is that it had no clear end point or exit strategy. So I'm wondering if the member for Regina Quapel could explain to us what he sees as being the end point and the exit strategy uh, from the campaign that he's calling for in Iraq and Syria. Thank you. The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I, 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 I do acknowledge that uh, my colleague and I did have some, uh, uh, some shared memories together in, in 2004. And uh, although, of course, uh, Regina Luvan being right beside my riding, I was hoping for a different result in the election. It is good to see him uh, make, make the contribution uh, that he's doing. And, and uh, I wish him uh, a, li a little bit of luck in his <laughs> parliamentary career here. Uh, but I, I do want to warn him uh, about assuming anything. We all know what happens when someone assumes. Uh, but he asked a very specific question. What's the end game on this mission? Well, there can be no, in my view, there, there can be no safety or security or peace in the area as long as there are people like ISIS uh, out to destroy innocent human beings they, uh, every day. I mean, the, their worldview is something uh, completely incompatible with any peace-loving nation, Islamic, secular, or otherwise. Uh, you cannot uh, count on an area to be stable if there are elements like ISIS in it. So I think the end game for NATO, for the UN, is uh, ultimately to, uh, to destroy ISIS. It starts with uh, limiting their capability and starts with degrading their ability to, to, uh, to launch attacks and to invade areas. And hopefully, with, uh, with the assistance of our allies there in Iraq and, and Kurds and Turkey and Syria, uh, not Syria, but uh, other countries uh, around the area, that they can, they can build up their own forces to do that. But the point here is that our jets are making a meaningful impact in all of those aspects, whether it's temper uh, currently degrading ISIS, whether it's in the short term uh, limiting the ability for ISIS to launch these kinds of attacks, or in the long term to provide that peace and stability after eliminating ISIS. Our jets are a big part of that. Our air mission was important, and it was meaningful. I'd like to thank my uh, neighbour MP for Moose Jaw Lake Centre Lanigan uh, for not running in uh, Regina Luvan. Uh, I, I would also like to thank him for his able uh, chairmanship of the Government Operations Committee on which I also serve. And finally, I would like to thank the member uh, for his speech. I would like to pick up on the point that he raised about TFSA contribution limits being cumulative from one year to the next. And it seems to me one of the problems with a contribution limit of $10,000 is that over the years and over the decades, it would enable uh, wealthy Canadians to accumulate pools of hundreds of thousands of dollars of investments that would be uh, completely untaxed and that this could really contribute to growing inequality and really erode public finances. And I wonder what the member thinks about that prospect uh, looking into the future. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Moose Jaw Lake Centre, Lanigan. Thank you very much, and I want to uh, I want to thank my colleague from Regina for thanking me for not running in his riding, uh, Mr. Speaker. Let me just say this: I think if you took a poll of all Canadians, regardless of income level, and asked them a simple question: Do you agree that you should be allowed to contribute more money to a tax-free savings account rather than less? The answer would come back clearly. Yes, we want, to, uh, we want to have the ability to invest more money in a tax-free environment, if we can. Now, Mr. Speaker, this does not only allow the wealthy to put money into an account. I have many people in my riding, Mr. Speaker, and I can assure you that most of them are not wealthy, are most, are most of them are not affluent, as the government would suggest. When I talk to them about the CFSA, many of them say, look, I would like to have the ability that if I sell my house or come into an inheritance, somehow come in with additional dollars, be able to put it into an account where it's sheltered, where it's tax-free. Don't deny me that ability, whether or not I max out, whether or not I contribute to it in totality over the years is incidental. 
but at least knowing that it is there is something that I agree with. So I, I fall back on words I said in my initial presentation, Mr. Speaker. When in Canada did it become a bad thing to allow Canadians to contribute more money tax-free? When did that become a bad thing? When it did, Mr. Speaker, apparently, is when this Liberal government got elected. Very short question, the Honourable Member for Regina Leuven. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Perhaps you've seen the movie uh, Groundhog Day because I started out my week asking the member uh, for uh, Moose Jaw Lake Center land again a question about Bill C-2. And uh, I asked him whether he was concerned that a $10,000 contribution limit over time might allow the affluent to accumulate huge pools of tax-free investments. His response that it was good to allow people to make contributions tax-free. But Mr. Speaker, there can be too much of a good thing. So in that spirit of Groundhog Day, I'd like to ask the same question. Uh, at some point, does the member for Moose Jaw Lake Centre Lanigan believe that investment profits should be subject to tax? 30 seconds or less, the Honourable Member for Moose Jaw Lake Centre Lanigan. Well, I think if anyone wondered whether or not the, my friend and my colleague from Regina Leuven had socialist leanings, uh, it's been cleared up right now. Mr. Speaker, when did it become a bad thing to allow Canadians to reduce their tax burden? When did it become a bad thing to allow Canadians to invest in a vehicle that lets them keep more of their hard-earned money? When did it become a bad thing to allow Canadians to keep their money in a tax-free vehicle? It shouldn't be penalized, Mr. Speaker. Socialists would like to do that. We do not.